Today, we're going to talk about exactly what foods you should be eating to help regrow your hair. And this is not about taking another supplement. This is talking about your foods. There's something I stumbled on recently that's actually very interesting. I'm going to share with you. It's from this uh, paper that I, I read that had something in it that just jumped out at me that I've never heard before. And then I did a deep dive into this one single amino acid and I found some amazing things. Okay. So I'm going to share that with you today. So I think most people know that hair is made out of protein and you would think if you just eat enough protein, you know, your hair would come back, but that doesn't always work. In this published uh, paper, it went through various deficiencies that were found on certain percentage people with hair loss. And then I get to this one amino acid that was deficient in over 90% of people with alopecia. And this amino acid is called histidine. And no, I would not recommend going out and just getting it and taking it because I think it's really important to understand why you might be deficient, if at all. It's not an abundant amino acid, but histidine is a precursor to histamine, okay, which is involved in immune reactions, allergies, inflammation, healing, things like that. If you're deficient in histidine, you could be uh, anemic because the need for that amino acid to build red blood cells. It's great for your skin if you have eczema or any type of dermatitis. If you take too much of it, you can get premature ejaculation. So that's one interesting function. It's going to be directly involved in making the keratin protein of your hair to make your hair strong and more hydrated as well as regulating the copper and zinc, okay, that the hair needs as well. And if someone is also taking medications or drinking alcohol, uh, that amino acid can be a lot lower. If a person doesn't have the right stomach acids, they're not going to be able to break down and extract that amino acids from the food that they're eating. You're going to have indigestion, gas, bloating. Any of those, the solution is to start taking something called betaine hydrochloride, which is an acidifier. Now, here's the interesting part about this whole discussion. In order for you to use histidine, there are certain cofactors. B6, which is pretty easy to get. Uh, the right copper and zinc ratios, which is not as easy to get. And folate. Folate is normally in dark leafy green vegetables. But if you're carnivore, like, and you don't eat vegetables, where are you getting your folate? Well, it just so happens that the most folate is in liver. But let's say that you're not on carnivore and you're just eating regular foods, but you don't consume a lot of dark leafy green vegetables. That could be another reason why you're deficient. Also, if you're taking a supplement with folic acid, which is not the natural source of this vitamin B9, that can potentially even inhibit this conversion into the active form because you're going to use up a lot of the enzyme that is needed to make this conversion. And as a side note, there is a chemo drug called methyltrexate. And the way this drug works is simply by blocking folate. You see, folate increases the synthesis or the reproduction of your cells. And if you block that using this anti-folate drug, you can stop the, the growth of something. The problem is you don't want to completely stop the growth of all your cells, the healthy ones too, because you have a lot of side effects. So they have to give you a certain folate to counter some of the side effects. If you're deficient in folate, your um, damage to your DNA goes way up. In fact, it could be comparable to radiation damage to your DNA. So this is why folate is so important in protecting the DNA in the mitochondria, and also to help prevent against cancer as well, because cancer is the damaged uh, mitochondria. So it's important to have this folate work, okay, or to have a sufficient amount so you can have this histidine work, so then you can counter any potential hair loss. Let's say, for example, you go on a prolonged fast and you start losing your hair. It probably means that you're not ready for it or it's not good for your body because when you keto adapt, and you actually start burning fat, you should feel wonderful. And if it doesn't, um, I wouldn't push it because some bodies don't do well on prolonged fasting. So let's get right to the foods, the three foods. Number one is organ meats, specifically liver, or if you don't like it, I would take it in a supplement. 
Here's the thing about liver. Potentially, you can consume too much liver. But if you're consuming like maybe two ounces or three ounces, you're not going to have a problem. But if you're consuming a lot every single day, that could be a problem. And just as an interesting side note, some people have this idea that if I consume organ meats like uh, liver, I'm going to be getting a lot of saturated fat. Actually, no. Um, organ meats are very low in fats. Number two, you want to do more animal uh, protein, beef. You can do fish and stuff like that, but you want to make sure you have enough of that raw material. And number three, shellfish for your zinc and copper ratios. But shellfish also has selenium and has all the trace minerals. I'm talking about shrimp, scallops, crab, lobster. So as I went through this video, you might have had certain light bulbs go off on why you potentially could be deficient in, in some of the factors. Now, if you have not seen this video on folate, you should probably watch this one next because if you have this problem, then you need to know about that. And I put that video up right here. Check it out.